Let's go to one last passage. Just to show you the power of taking the word wrongly and sapping, of it, sapping it of its strength. Go to Matthew 25. It is the great judgment of the nations. It says in verse 32 of chapter 25, all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we uh, see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these, my brothers of mine. Even the least of them, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left, depart from me because they did not do the same. We take this incredibly important text and use it to validate the fact that we ought to have prison ministries. That is not what this text means. Now, should we have prison ministries? Yes. Yes. Should we feed the poor? Absolutely. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's not saying, I was a thief in prison and you visited me. What is he saying? Well, let's just go back to an illustration. You and I and several of us have been meeting on Sunday nights out in a kind of a grave area in a kind of a part right outside of Rome where most people are too superstitious to go. We've been going in there and and holding worship services to Jesus. And we all know that we need to scatter out before we all return back. So we don't want to return in groups. And as as we make it to our homes, about two hours later, someone wakes us up and says, have you heard the news? Have you heard the news? Well, What? Julius, the deacon. Well, what about him? As he was going home tonight, they caught him. They caught him with a letter. He's been thrown in prison. All right, well, let's call a meeting immediately. Have everybody go back. They go back. Now, in the prisons in the third world, still today at times, if you're thrown in prison, and no one brings you clothing, you go naked. You're usually beaten before you're thrown in prison. So if no one comes to help you with medical attention, you die of infection. And the prison does not provide food. Someone from the outside must come and bring you food. And so we have our meeting together and everyone says, dear, our, dear, our dear Julius, he's, he's, he's been thrown in prison. We must go to him. We've heard that he's been beaten badly. He hasn't had water for several hours. We've got to go. And someone zealously, a young Christian stands up. I'll go. Older Christian stands up and says, just settle down. Now we need to understand what's going on here. We must go. And someone else says, but sir... If, if we take water to him and clothing to him, they've got him in there because he's a Christian. Won't they know that we're Christians too? Yes. Won't they throw us in the same prison? That or kill us. And then the young man says, I'll still go. This teaching is not about a prison ministry. This teaching is saying, What? We are saved only by faith alone. But faith is the result, like so many other things, of the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. 
And one of the greatest manifestations of genuine conversion is a love for the brethren. To the point that we are willing to die for them. And yet again, we take still another text and we strip it of its power. Gospel. Well, this country is not gospel hardened. It's gospel ignorant. So for you who do not believe, believe. How will I know? It'd be a work of grace. It'd be a confirmation. That will continue. That will continue. Not one or the other. Not either or. Both and. For those of you who are struggling, not knowing whether you believe or not, I appreciate the battle and it may be sincere, but be very careful that you do not expect from your repentance and from your faith something that should only be expected from those who have walked with Him for many, many years. If you realize you have no longer any strength within you and you must let go, and yet you believe that you can let go and fall upon Him, then do so. Look unto Christ And be saved. All the ends of the earth believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and not disappointed. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your Word and for Your help. I pray, Lord, that You would do a saving work in the hearts of men and women and children an affirming work in the hearts of those who need it, a disturbing work in the hearts of others. Whatever is needed, Father, to most bring about Your purposes in the hearts of men. In Jesus' name.